Welcome to the Whitmer Cast. My name is Scott Esplin. Uh, I'm a member of the board of the John Whitmer Historical Association and uh, a professor of uh, Latter-day Saint Church History and Doctrine uh, at Brigham Young University. Um, my guest today is Casey Griffiths, uh, a professor of ch Church History and Doctrine also at BYU. Um, Casey is the president-elect of the John Whitmer Historical Association and also the program chair for uh, the upcoming 50th anniversary conference of the John Whitmer Historical Association. Uh, Casey, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you, Scott. It's good to be here. Uh, glad to have you. Uh, we're here today to talk about the upcoming conference uh, and, and learn from the program chair uh, what activities we should anticipate, uh, what we're looking forward to, and, and how best to prepare for what looks to be a wonderful event. So uh, we look forward to lear learning from you, Casey. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, this, of course, uh, as many of our listeners will know, um, is the 50th anniversary of the founding of the John Whitmer Historical Association. Uh, and uh, so we gather together uh, to celebrate uh, that, uh, that event. The, the organization was founded in September uh, of 1972, uh, when 15 people gathered at the home of Dick and Barbara Howard uh, to uh, inaugurate a, a historical organization focused on the history of the, the, the Latter-day Saint uh, Restoration Movement. And uh, so, Casey, what can you tell us about uh, this 50th anniversary conference, uh, kind of maybe about the early history of the organization or how we're going to celebrate that this year? What, what will be different in this year's conference because it's the 50th anniversary? Well, a number of things have come together to make this conference kind of unique. Uh, first time we're meeting together uh, in two years. Uh, okay. We've done online conferences for the last two years. Today we're going to try and get the family back together, though there will still be streaming options. Um, it's going to be held in a really unique venue, and that is the Community of Christ Temple and World Headquarters in Independence, Missouri. Wonderful. Uh, we were thrilled to be able to get the temple. It's beautiful. The facilities are wonderful. Um, and we've got a few uh, surprises along the way to mark our 50th and, and sort of look back on what makes the JWHA unique and what its contributions have been so far. Wonderful. I hope you're able to tease some of those uh, uh, surprises <laughs> in our for our listeners here on the podcast. Uh, um, who are some of the headliners? What should we be looking forward to? Uh, maybe the plenary sessions that particularly interest uh, you or, or might, might interest our listeners. Um, what, uh, what, what special events should they, uh, maybe before we do that, let's, let's review the dates again mm -hmm. uh, so that people can plan accordingly. Uh, uh, the conference itself uh, begins on Thursday. Yes, that's right. Uh, September, September 15th. 15th. Mm -hmm. uh, it runs from the 15th through the 18th. So we will uh, uh, go across the dates of the an of the actual anniversary of the founding of the organization. That's right. On the 18th. Uh, so on Thursday, the 15th, uh, the conference begins. Kind of walk us through, Casey. What, uh, uh, what, what time should it begin Thursday? I, I know we will be at the temple uh, in Independence, but there is a conference hotel uh, that people, g people can register and stay at. So kind of walk us through. Uh, what they should plan on on Thursday, and then maybe some of the highlights that first day. Yeah, registration uh, opens on Thursday, 4 to 6 p.m. Um, this year, uh, we're asking everybody to register before they come to co come to the conference so that they understand COVID protocols and things like that. Uh, we've arranged for Stony Creek, which is one of the nicest hotels in the area, to be our official conference uh, hotel, though all the sessions are going to be held in the Independence Temple. Um, and, and it'll have uh, one of the things I like about the John Whitmer conference is that it has some features a lot of other conferences don't have, including conference runs from Thursday night until Sunday morning, which mm -hmm. is when we traditionally have our hymn fest, okay. which is really fun because it draws from every restoration tradition. We'll sing songs that are associated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, and some that come from Community of Christ, and some that come from the the Church of Christ, uh, all, a.k.a. the Bickertonites, and so on and so forth. And so, um, I always love the, uh, the Hymn Fest is one of my yeah, favorite activities. Hymn Fest is a highlight that. for everybody, I think. Yeah. Uh, but Thursday night through Sunday morning are the basic okay. outlines of the conference. But people are welcome to come as much or as little as they're able to. And attend again. Streaming is an option as well. If the person, but we do want everyone person. registering in advance. Yes. Uh, so registration is open now. Early bird registration is already passed. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on whenever you're listening to this podcast, but it's passed as we're recording it, and uh, and so register now. Uh, make sure you reserve your spot. There will be limited options for streaming, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, limited sessions. But uh, we're hoping uh, people are able to join us in person and. Uh, they're, we're obviously taking, uh, trying to take proper protocols uh, to, to protect, keep people safe in light of the 
COVID pandemic, but uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're at the point to where we're taking our first cautious steps and meeting together again, but we're going to try and be as safe as possible as well. And so that, that requires an early registration, a few other things. So if anybody hasn't registered yet, I'd urge them to, to get onto the website and get registered as quickly as they can. For those that don't know, our website's jwha.info. And from there, you'll find all the a link to the event. Click on the events tab at the top of the page. You'll find a link to the 50th anniversary conference. That's correct. And speaking of headliners, um, we've got some unique features. Um, Amy Derogatis uh, is going to be our speaker in our Richard Howard lecture. Uh, she was actually all set to go last year and then had some scheduling conflicts. So we carried her over and basically kept two big headliners. She's going to be speaking. The The title of her presentation is Intimate Exposure, the Charlie Douglas Daguerreotype and American Religious History, uh, which is a fascinating, fascinating uh, presentation about um, uh, a photo taken of one of James Strang's uh, wives hmm. uh, while she was dressed as a man. <laughs> so. Oh, wow. And so uh, it says a lot about the Church of Jesus Christ affiliated with James Strang and a lot of its early history. And um, Amy's taken some unique angles on on gender and roles and things like that um, back then and how things were working. And so the discovery that a daguerreotype is really, really um, an interesting story just to begin with in and of itself, but then placed in a larger context of James Strang and, and his movement, it's, it's going to be a really fascinating presentation. Okay. Thank you. And she's at U- Michigan State University, is that, that right? That is correct, yes. And, that, and that'll be Thursday night? That's Thursday night, yes. Okay. And it will take place in the sanctuary mm-hmm. uh, there at the temple. Yeah, most of our big uh, plenary and headlining sessions take place in the sanctuary of the temple, which is a beautiful space too. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other speaker uh, that will be uh, giving a, an address is uh, Spencer McBride. Okay. Uh, who wrote an, a, a fascinating book called Joseph Smith for President, talking about Joseph Smith's 1844 uh, presidential campaign. Uh, if you're a fan of podcasts, you might know Spencer is the voice of the Joseph Smith Papers podcast, which have been really uh, popular. And Spencer's just done some really, really great research on this crucial six months of Joseph Smith's life, uh, the last six months of his life, <laughs> points out a couple really interesting things. Joseph Smith is the first um, major American presidential candidate to be assassinated, uh, for instance, and also the context surrounding his run for the presidency, how it affected issues, how it may have played a role in his martyrdom, and a lot of things that are really fascinating linked to it. Great. And that one will also be in the sanctuary on Saturday morning, I believe. Mm -hmm. So those are the two... plenary keynote sessions. Is yes, that correct? that's right. Yeah. Uh, yes. Spencer is a wonderful scholar, uh, a good friend of, uh, of uh, history of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and Latter-day Saint restoration movements and, uh, and a great presenter. So that will be a, a, yeah. a great, a great session as well. It's going to be really fascinating. Spencer knows how to find the interesting angles and to present them in a way that makes them really, really pop for everybody around him. Wonderful. Great. Well, uh, so those are the, the plenary sessions. Uh, what other activities should uh, attendees expect? Uh, I know there's some some celebratory events uh, for the 50th anniversary, uh, gala events. Uh, talk to us about those. Yeah, um, some special things. Uh, Friday night, there's a 50th anniversary celebration. We're going to be gathering together all the past presidents of the JWHA that we can uh, we've also tried to find a way to help a couple whose health might not allow them to attend to still have a presence at the conference and speak Wonderful. to its importance and founding. I think we tried to track down just about every founder that was still with us and have them have an opportunity to share a little bit and talk about the founding of the JWHA and what their expectations are. And it's going to be really, really wonderful. And then on Saturday night, we have our presidential banquet and address where our Uh, President uh, Kristen McKay is going to be giving a a talk called Mr. Smith Goes to Salt Lake City, Fred M. in Utah, 1904 to 1906. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, because there's nothing boring about Fred M. to begin with. (laughs) And uh, him in Salt Lake, uh, as I understand it, generated a few fireworks, uh, which which had repercussions in the decade to follow. And and Kristen just does a wonderful job. That would be great. I'm looking forward to hearing from her. And we're grateful for all the work she's done for this conference. I know uh, preparing it and organizing it, helping us uh, get ready for this. So yeah, thanks, Kristen. Yeah, Kristen does a good job keeping everybody in line and keeping everything ordered. 
great. Uh, then, uh, you know, a couple of uh, fun things. I think they're having a 70s dress day. Is that right? Uh, yeah, kind Friday. Of celebrate the, seven, uh, the, the founding of the organization in the 1970s. So. Yeah, Friday is 70s day. So if you have a big fat tie, I uh-huh. guess, like they <laughs> were the style back then or a corduroy jacket or pants yeah. or something like that, put it on and uh, feel free to express yourself. Uh, the temple's been very, very generous in, you know, allowing us to play music and things that will create kind of a unique environment, take you back to 1972 when the JWHA began. Great. So that's on Friday. That's on Friday. Okay. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, we've talked about, you know, headliners, plenary sessions. Uh, are there any, uh, there's obviously, as is typical for our conference, a number of uh, breakout sessions uh, uh, on Friday and Saturday. Uh, are there any particular breakout sessions that uh, that interest you, or, or other sessions we might highlight for our for our listeners? Well, let me mention two sessions in particular um, that I think you know any other year just to have one of these would have been amazing, but to have two. So um, uh, the first one is uh, there's a book being published uh, by the Religious Studies Center and John Whitmer Books together called restoration scholars and dialogue from the church community of christ and the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints uh that kind of marks uh this this landmark interfaith collaboration that has been happening for the last uh, few years scott you and i have both been part of this and i've loved learning from our friends in in community of christ it's, it's been, been wonderful. it's been a real landmark uh, andrew bolton david howlett matt frizzell a lot of wonderful scholars from Community of Christ and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have been meeting twice yearly uh, with a with a theme in mind and to discuss what the differences are between the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and Community of Christ. And so uh, different um, meetings have revolved around topics like scripture, uh, prophets and polity, sacred spaces. Uh, the first vision, uh, just a number of different topics. And and this interfaith dialogue, which I just see as a landmark between the two uh, organizations, really is intrinsically tied to John Whitmer because one of the dialogues typically takes place the same time as John Whitmer. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, at this conference, after the Hymn Fest on Sunday, we're going to be holding another interfaith dialogue in the temple discussing Joseph Smith and his role in both movements. Uh, Restorations is a book of conversations of scholars that have participated in those dialogues uh, where they just basically present both sides. Where can we find points of agreement? Where do we not agree? How can we come together on all these things? And um, I I was able to serve as one of the editors of that book. Andrew Bolton uh, was the other editor. And it has just been so delightful to work with all these authors and hear their insights and hear how they've become friends and how they've learned to you know uh, respect differences but also find commonalities uh, david howlett who's been a longtime participant in the dialogue too originally started by saying you know when you think of it there are oldest enemies <laughs> mm-hmm. and so um, we see it as a real um, christian gesture that both groups have been willing to set aside their antagonism. There's still a little rivalry that goes on there, but it's a friendly rivalry at this point. And talk at length about what makes us different, but also what brings us together. And that I see um, as a central purpose for the JWHA. Uh, The JWHA has always been a place where diverse restoration movements have representation and can come together and just be part of the family. It's like a big family reunion for people yeah. to trace themselves back to the restoration. Yeah, I've always felt welcome there. Uh, I, I've been going for, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 years now, 20 years. And uh, I've always felt welcome and, uh, and, and, and I love it. I just, uh, it's, uh, I, I love learning from each other and, and have the opportunity to share, share my, my scholarship. Yeah, and that's a real credit to the founders who it wanted is. to create this kind of pluralistic environment when they set up the JWHA, which has really opened doors for a lot of people and brought a lot of the family back together. Yeah. So that session, there. so there's a panel, a plenary session, mm-hmm. a, a panel where authors, editors will be sharing their insights from the book. Yeah. And then a book signing that follows. So the book will be available at the conference. We're yes. excited. Uh, I, one of my roles on the, on the board is to, as a liaison with John Whitmer Books, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm excited for that uh, John Whitmer Books uh, publication that's forthcoming. So, yeah, we're excited. It's a, jointly published with the RSC and John yeah. Whitmer Books, so that'll be it's great. A, it's a joint publication with the Religious Studies Center, which is at BYU, yeah. 
and John Whitmer Books. It has the imprint of both. Um, That's wonderful. And we scrambled to get the book ready in time for this conference specifically. It's going to, I think, be available September 2nd for okay. anybody to purchase on Amazon. But if you want to come to the conference, you'd have the opportunity to hear from the authors to know a little bit deeper backstory and to maybe get a book signed if if that's the sort of thing that interests it's you. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, too. You said there was a second one that interests you. Uh, you know, if, if there were two of these, if there were just one of these in a conference and we have two, what's the second one that oh, uh, really uh, jumps out at you? <laughs> this one is is causing seismic shifts already. And it might be the presentation I'm personally most excited to go see. Um, and, and let me give you a little bit of background here, too. Um, when we were setting up the conference agenda, we had Ron Romig and Locke Mackay, who are total favorites at the conference to begin with. They mm -hmm. always present on something interesting, say that they had an embargoed paper. And as the conference chair, I kept saying, what is the deal with the secrecy? <laughs> like, how big of a deal could something possibly be that you can't tell me what, what it's going to be about? And then late July, I was on vacation with my family and I got an email because sometimes I post things on the John Whitmer Facebook page that they were the next issue of the journal was going to be about a possible daguerreotype image of Joseph Smith Jr., which is mm -hmm. sort of the holy grail of Latter-day Saint artifacts. Um, uh, the article's been out. It's been generating buzz for the past month. Uh, uh, there has been a lot of emotional feelings <laughs> from a number of different people. The pictures almost become sort of a Rorschach test for how you already feel about Joseph Smith. Cool. Uh, but it, we're going to have the two uh, people responsible for that article, Locke Mackay and Ron Romig, there to present and answer questions on the daguerreotype itself. And so that is going to be absolutely fascinating. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. Um, if anybody knows anything about Mormon history in the last month, they've heard something about that. And yeah. It's going to be great to hear directly from the researchers uh, the reasons why they, they, they feel, and they feel very strongly that this is a genuine image of, of Joseph Smith Jr. This is Saturday morning, I believe. This yeah. is Saturday at 1115, the plenary uh, session. Yes, that's right. That's right. And that'll in be the in the sanctuary. sanctuary. That's one of our sessions that's available online. And boy, I'm looking forward to, to hearing from them, but also... Yeah. Um, hearing some arguments f from people who feel like maybe it isn't or here's some things that we know and that we don't know. It's just turned out to be this great conversation uh, about where the image came from and what it could possibly mean. Which, again, fits well with with the overall message and theme and kind of purpose of John Whitmer, a place where people can have conversations. Yeah. And uh, that, that'll be a nice That'd be a great conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I've talked with Locke multiple times, and I think he's very excited to hear people's opinions and feelings to get uh, insights from people that might have subject expertise, but to okay. have a good conversation about this and Wonderful. and what it represents, because it's it's a unique discovery, something that I don't know if I ever thought we'd we'd see. Uh, yeah. To have it there is really really great. That's great. Staying on Saturday, uh, since that session is Saturday morning, uh, Saturday is also historically our, our day when we have tours and experiences. Yeah, uh, and because we're uh, at the world headquarters for the community of Christ and, and in proximity to uh, sites associated with John Whitmer, uh, we've got events and, and experiences with both. Uh, so talk to us about the tours and experiences that'll occur. I think all, both, all of those are Saturday afternoon. So talk to us about those. So we are so grateful to uh, community of Christ because they have some really, really interesting artifacts um, in their, in their library, which is in the temple and they've agreed to allow us to do a limited showing of these artifacts. So this one um, is really small <laughs> um, and, and might already be sold out, but I, uh, but they're going to basically bring out some of the artifacts that are in the temple. I'll be honest, I, I signed up for this one months ago. I yeah. registered for the conference months ago because of that, yeah. that particular opportunity. I, yeah, I, they're... I, quickly signed up for that one. Well, it, I mean, most people know, you know about the printer's manuscript, mm -hmm. Uh, which was which was sold in 2017. Uh, this is going to be stuff of that caliber, and I won't give it away. But um, I've seen a few of these things, and it is just a really really special experience. That's, I think Locke is leading that one. Is that's that correct? unique. Locke is going to be in charge of that. Well. Barbara Walden Barbara, is going to be helping okay. out Great. as well, and uh, that should be so. A number of past presidents and friends of friends of John Whitmer. Yeah associated there that's great yeah in addition to that we do have a tour for anybody that wants to get out of the temple 
Um, our tour this year is going to be centered around John Whitmer. So Ron Romig, who is the world's expert on John Whitmer, and Alex Baugh, who is the world's expert on all things Missouri, uh, are going to be taking. Great pair. That's great. <laughs> it's good. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, they're going to be taking a tour group uh, through sites linked to John Whitmer. So they're going to go to Far West. Um, Alex uh, knows where John Whitmer's house was. Oh, good. Uh, as you know, after Far West was abandoned, mm-hmm. John Whitmer stayed there, kind mm-hmm. of giving tours through this ghost town. And then a few miles away is Kingston, Missouri, which is where John Whitmer's grave is. Yeah, um, and we're going to zoom up there and hit some of those sites and then come back in time for the uh, presidential banquet that evening. Maybe you don't know this. Uh, do you know if there's still availability on, on the tour? To there is still, still availability on the tour. And okay. we've got um, provisions set up to even get an extra bus if that's what okay. we have to do. So on the tour as well, we're conscious of, of COVID and Good. giving everybody space and distance so that they feel safe. Um, spots still open on the tour. And again, we'll take as many people on the tour as want to go. But again, we would like people to register in advance so that we can yeah. plan and prepare accordingly, just yeah. like we're having registration for the for the conference. Don't, yeah. don't show up Saturday afternoon and hope to jump on a tour. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, to, to, to keep things as safe as possible, we need to know in advance. So I'd urge everybody for these experiences and tours to to jump online and, and make sure that you're registered well in advance, just like... You set the example registering uh, a couple months in advance. Rarely do I, rarely am I that far in advance. But uh, <laughs> thanks, Casey. Uh, all I guess highlighting the the event on on Saturday night, our, our presidential banquet yeah. and address. Uh, Kristen will be uh, delivering her presidential address, and uh, and so we've we've talked already uh, briefly about that. But anything else you want to say about the presidential banquet um, address? Uh, you know what what should people expect? Maybe those who haven't attended before. Uh, what's the dress like? What, what should they anticipate? What, what are we looking at at a presidential? In this, maybe with the 50th anniversary, is it different from, from previous banquets? It's going to be a little fancier uh, than normal. We're doing it at the Uptown Market, uh, which is a very, very nice venue. Um, should be really classy. And um, um, I mean, it's John Whitmer, so it's always very a little more relaxed. Uh, but this one is a little bit fancier, maybe wear so nicer clothes. So if I don't, if I don't have a, a, a black tie, I don't. I, I, don't, I don't think I we'll, don't need to rent a tux. I'm okay. Yeah, we're not going to kick you out a, if you're not in a tuxedo you. or your your nicest dress or something like that. But um, it is going to be a little bit more upscale, and okay. we want it to be Sunday Sunday best that kind okay. of thing, just to represent the fact that this is a really special milestone for for the association. We're grateful for it. Great. Now, you mentioned it was the Uptown Market, uh, and we're out at uh, Stony Creek uh, uh, for the for the conference hotel. Uh, is there are there shuttles? Is there transportation? How do people? How should people think to get between these locations, the temple, or do we encourage people to make sure they have access to to uh, uh, do they need to have a, a rental car or, or their own transportation or what? Is there any conference transportation that you're aware of? Um, none that I'm aware of, okay. and so I would say bring your own. Bring your own transportation. Be ready to move around. But also, there's a generous community at John Whitmer. Yes. Most people that are going go because of the association. So if you know somebody uh, that's going, work out transportation with them. I've got a okay. a friend here that um, we're we're actually sharing a room to lower costs, and then we're going to share a rental car so that we can. Okay. I get around a little bit and see a lot of the venues. And so carpool together or share, talk to each other. That's that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we've covered uh, most of the events. I think, is there anything else on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday we're missing, Casey? Uh, Sunday, we've mentioned the Hymn Fest, of course. Uh, Let me highlight a few of the, the breakout sessions uh, that sure. are going to be held, especially some of the ones that, uh, that I think are going to be especially interesting. Um uh, for instance, we've got uh, Bill Russell, who's a conference favorite. Everybody loves Bill. He's like yeah. the, you know, the eccentric uncle <laughs> that everybody just enjoys hearing from, and he's been there from the beginning. Uh, he's going to be presenting about the transformation within Community of Christ. Uh, his presentation is actually titled "The Role of Reason in the Transformation of the RLDS Church to Community of Christ." So that's going to be from an insider about yeah. some of the changes that have happened. I'm lucky enough to chair that session. I think I'm looking forward yeah, to listening right. to that. That's right. You one. are the chair. I get to listen to that one. Um, uh, there's going to be a session on the Graceland Seminary that's going to feature all of the former oh. deans of the Graceland Seminary really? uh, talking yeah. about its history. That's a panel discussion. I am very excited to hear about that. And we have a lot of members who have personal ties to Graceland. So yeah, we'll... yeah. A lot of people have ties to nice. Graceland. And if you don't, um, it's still going to be a fascinating presentation. Um, uh, 
boy, we have brought back some old favorites. So since it was our 50th anniversary, we reached out to several past presidents. Bill Russell is the is mm-hmm. the big name here. Uh, but Brian Hales, who a few years ago gave a fascinating presentation on Joseph Smith's polygamy, we we decided to give him his own hour, basically, to wow. just put everything he has out there. He has new stuff he's going to be presenting. Uh, Gene Adams, who is probably the world's expert on the Temple Lot Independence. And independence itself, yeah, Temple Lot. That's, is uh, gonna, since we're right there, that'll be great for Gene. Yeah, he's going to have a, a venue to talk. Uh, Jill Brim, who was our president Wonderful. last year. Uh-huh. And uh, didn't have as much of an opportunity because of the limitations with COVID. Yeah. We just told her, share everything. And yeah. she's going to be presenting on the Red Brick Store. Say she's done great work research. on the Red Brick Store, yeah. 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 And then Alex Baugh, uh, former president as well, is going to be presenting on Liberty Jail, which is not far away from the conference venue if anybody wants to zip up there and visit. Uh, in addition to that, uh, one of the things I'm most excited about is that we have worked really, really hard to recruit uh, students. Oh, good. Um, so we've got um, a fair number of up-and-coming, uh, bright and promising graduate students that are going to be presenting them. Uh, Robin Spears. I, I went to a conference in England um, last March, and Robin presented on women women's blessings. Hmm. So during the early restoration, women doing blessings in uh, Kirtland and Nauvoo, I thought her presentation was wonderful. And so I twisted her arm a little bit, and she agreed to to come to this conference and and share the presentation there too. And I think her research is just uh, really, really uh, fascinating stuff. And we've got people like uh, Hannah Syriac. Uh, Hannah is um, kind of well-known in the blogosphere. So she blogs for the mm-hmm. Deseret News yep. and posts a lot on Facebook. And um, she's doing a presentation on the creation of women's garments in Nauvoo, so temple garments. Um, th- that's just a few of our students. Um, uh, Michael Burnham, who's one of our graduate students here at BYU, has written a great paper on who wrote the martyrdom statement. So in, um, uh, in the Latter-day Saint Doctrine and Covenants in section 135, mm-hmm. um, a couple years ago, that was attributed to John Taylor. Now it's not. Michael has done kind of a forensic tracing of what we know about who wrote that and where it came from, because there's so many important phrases that come from that. And beyond our students, just a number of bright, wonderful um, scholars. Todd Compton, who's written a lot about Joseph Smith's plural wives, has a new volume that's going to be the source documents for his book, in Sacred Loneliness, he's going to be presenting. Um, David Howlett's talking about RLDS uh, feminist networks, some of his research on women within the RLDS movement, how they connected with each other. We've got Mike McKay and Dan Belknap that are going to be talking about um, Joseph Smith's panoptic visions. Uh, Mm. So how things like um, the vision of the three degrees of glory affected the later endowment. And then a few people like uh, Newell Bringhurst and Matt Harris that are going to be talking about uh, civil rights within uh, the RLDS Church, within the Church of Jesus Christ, within Community of Christ. Uh, Just a number of great presentations that I think are going to be really, really fascinating. Uh, Again, it's one of those things where, you know, every single hour there's multiple presentations I want to go to. It's hard to choose, but I don't think anybody's going to have a single session of this conference that they walk out of and say, oh boy, that wasn't, that was pretty boring. I think just about everything's pretty interesting. I don't think I'll have a single session where I can't find something that interests me. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's great. So just a, a gathering of very, very gifted scholars, Vicki Speak, who has done such great work on James Strang, is going to be mm-hmm. presenting, um, oh, Sandra Tanner, <laughs> who is well known in a lot of different circles, is going to be sharing a little bit about her story with her biographer, Ron Huggins, who has a book that just came out from Signature Books, um, that'll be presenting. So, uh, and then you've got people like Jonathan, um, I mean, David Grua presenting on, uh, development of liturgical rites and Latter-day Saint history. Uh, Kyle Walker, who is the expert on Joseph Smith's family talking about stuff. Mel Johnson, wow. uh, who's, um, well, so well known for research he's done on minor Texas. rights movements mm-hmm. and, and everything. He's going to be talking about African-Americans and temple endowments before 1978. Wow. Uh, which is just a fascinating subject. So all cutting edge, brand new stuff that um, even if you've studied church history your entire life, you'll probably pick up some new insights because this is very, very good research. And we're very excited about the 
the stable of presenters we have this year. Well, th- and, and for any of those presenters or, or ones we missed who are who are listening, uh, thank you for for sharing your research, and we're looking forward to hearing your presentations. And uh, thank you, Casey, for organizing, putting together as the program uh, chair such a fascinating conference. As a, as an attendee, uh, thank you on on behalf of all the attendees uh, yeah. for all of your work there. Um. Uh, so again, I, I think that's a, a lot of information for our listeners. Uh, we will have, you know, other things that are just traditional staples of of our conference. We'll have our, our silent auction. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's both an online version and I think an in-person uh, auction. Uh, so we invite you to uh, bring, uh, I think we're inviting people to bring uh, items for the auction. Yeah, if you uh, just want to show up with something, we'll put it in the auction. Put it in the auction or if you want to contribute to either online or... or uh, uh, in the silent auction in person. Uh, thank you to the generous donors in the past for that and, and others who have, and those this year who will participate. Um, it, it's going to be great just to be back together again. I, I look forward to seeing dear friends and, and learning and, and uh, being in independence in the temple. Uh, thank you uh, for, for organizing such a fabulous conference. Can you think of anything else? Uh, so I guess a, f- a final reminder again, I, I'd encourage any of our listeners register now, register you have to register in advance mm-hmm. uh, because of the, uh, the the protocols that are in place. So uh, register now, and uh, and uh, we just look forward to being with you at in Independence. Anything we should add, Casey? I would just back up what you just said, which is we've had online conferences for two years, and those were wonderful. <laughs> but there is a big difference between you know sitting in my basement staring at a screen. Um, and being there in person where you can, you know, pull someone aside and have a conversation, uh, or just have the opportunity to get to know each other. So in preparing the conference, we're really walking this line between the joy that comes from association. It's an association after all, Hmm. uh, but also making sure that we're as safe as possible as well. So COVID protocols will be in place. We're going to be as careful as we possibly can. We want everybody uh, to feel safe. And again, if, 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 if you prefer an online registration, most of the main sessions that we've talked about in our conversation here will be available to you. And so in whatever form you can get to the conference, we want you to be here. And I'll just say that uh, one of the things that appeals to me about JWHA is, is kind of it still has that sort of family reunion feel. I mean, we're inviting everybody we possibly can. I hope that 4,000 people show up, but... <laughs> Um, JWHA has always had this kind of unique, by the end of the conference, you know, just about every person that's there, it's smaller. Um, that's wonderful. We want to grow, but at the same time, we don't want to grow out of that family feeling that's always made JWHA special. That's wonderful. Well, thank you. And to all of our listeners and those members of the family, we look forward to seeing you uh, in Independence shortly. That is right. We'll see you in Independence. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Whitmer Cast. And uh, we invite you to listen to the other episodes and uh, and uh, become an active uh, participant member and uh, in the John Whitmer Historical Association. Thank you. Thank you.